I've been asked a lot of questions about this basic Hobby King uh, FPV setup. You've probably seen it all over the web. It's the um, TS351 transmitter with the RC305 receiver. It's probably one of the cheapest um, entry-level FPV setups you can find. So I'm going to do a series of videos addressing a few questions that I've been asked and starting with how much transmission time can you get before you need to charge your LiPo? And in, in my test, I'm actually using a uh, 2S 800 milliamp LiPo, and I run it separate from the actual battery on the quad uh, just to keep you know, power clean and, and separated. So you can actually run a 3S LiPo, um, but you know, there's an added cost with the weight. And there are ways to clean the power off if you're using the same battery that you do for, for the rest of your quad. But for the purposes of this test, I'm running it separately. And we're going to take a look and just see how much time that we can get. I'm going to try to drain uh, this down to probably three three and a half volts per cell. And during that, we'll you know do an analysis uh, as vol the voltage drop over time. You're going to get much more FPV transmission time than you would flight time on your, your vehicle. So, you know, there are other batteries that come into play. Obviously, your GoPro battery, in this case with the LCD screen, whether it's this or Fat Shark goggles, you're going to have a battery there. So there's many different points of failure, but I wanted to kind of chart, just based on a few questions, just the, the consumption over time to see, you know, hopefully this is probably the strongest link in the chain when it comes to your FPV setup. And we'll find that out here in a minute. Okay, let me just take a quick voltage reading on our LiPo. It's pretty close to 4.2 volts a cell. We'll go ahead and get everything powered up. So I'll power the transmitter. Receiver's power. Let's take a look and just see if we're broadcasting. Okay, you can see we're broadcasting. And let me also point out that we are on channel 3 with our transmitter and receiver combo. That's, I believe that's around 5,665 megahertz. That's channel three of that 5.8 gigahertz band. Okay, and what I'll do right now is I'll go ahead and I'm gonna separate the uh, receiver and the transmitter. Probably take one outside and just continue to uh, monitor and we'll see when we start to drop and lose the signal. The transmitter, I put about 30 feet away outside. Okay, so we're a little bit over 30 minutes into the test and we're at right at about uh, four volts per cell. So we've used, you know, close to 0.2 volts uh, per cell over the past 30 minutes. Okay, so we're about an hour and 15 minutes into the test and our LiPo cell voltages are 3.89 and 3.89 for each cell. So about a, what's that, a 0.3 volt drop from 4.2 to 3.9 roughly. So, and you can see the actual LCD monitor is about halfway down and the GoPro, I just checked it outside, is actually about a quarter of a battery left. So it'll be interesting. We might lose power on the uh, LCD or GoPro before we do on the uh, FPV transmitter. Okay, so an hour and 45 minutes later, we're at 3.82 and 3.82 volts per cell. Our GoPro is dead from all that broadcasting, I guess, that live video out, and you can see on our FPV screen, or LCD monitor, there's no signal, but our transmitter still going strong. So there's no doubt that you would be able to get plenty of flights in uh, with a single charge of the 2S LiPo. Now, I'm not sure, and I wanna do some uh, research, just if you have a stronger LiPo, does your range actually uh, improve? And that's what I'm gonna do next as a follow-up video. Been asked quite a few times what the range of this uh, setup is. Hobby King, I think, says about 500 meters. So, you know, 1,500 feet or some change 
about a quarter of a mile and that's just with these standard linearly polarized antennas that come with the setup so you can definitely do some things to improve uh, the range there but I'll do some testing with the state range testing with a standard setup and I uh, hope the this was useful I've been kind of wanting to figure out and I still don't know what the total uh, transmission time is we can probably I'm going to chart uh, the data you'll be able to see it as a link to a Google spreadsheet We can probably extrapolate roughly what we think um, our transmission time would be let's look at the data from the spreadsheets you guys know I couldn't uh, leave you without boring you with some data so here we go now I was taking a reading every five minutes and then I got a little lazy at the end every 10 or 15 minutes but you can kind of see you know where we started out total voltage uh, close to 8.4 volts and then over time we dropped down to 7.6 volts so roughly a 0.8 volt drop from uh, 215 p.m. to 4 p.m. You can see that in this chart over here. So pretty nice, uh, very constant transmission uh, load over time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, saw that uh, the GoPro battery died. An hour and 45 minutes comes out to 105 minutes. And over that period of time, you can, and you guys can check my math uh, if you dig into the spreadsheet a voltage drop of almost 0.75 volts and this is where I uh, basically came up with a voltage drop per minute because I wanted to extrapolate out how many minutes we had left to extrapolate out here's what I did I said looking at B18 we're at 7.6 volts that's where the uh, GoPro battery died and let's just say that we wanted to discharge to about three and a half volts per cell which is kind of a safe uh, voltage per cell, then that would leave us at a total of seven volts. So 7.6 minus 0.6 gets us seven volts or three and a half volts per cell. So 0.6 is kind of the number we're working with as the remaining uh, voltage that we wanna, want it to drop over time. So 0.6 divided by our voltage drop per minute, which we calculated here, comes out to 85 minutes. So you take 105 plus 85 and we get 190 minutes or a little bit over three hours. So once again, that's with an 800 milliamp um, 2S LiPo with a uh, 20 to 30 C rating. So you're not doing any sort of a massive discharge here. You know, this, this transmitter doesn't consume a lot of power. So three hours is a pretty good uh, uh, chunk of time before you need to, to charge. If you're going to have uh, your GoPro drain or your FPV goggle battery drain before uh, your transmitter battery does. If you guys you know, notice anything wrong with the calculations, let me know or just have any general questions. Uh, feel free to post in the comments below. And I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.